so you lovers welcome back to the channel if it's your first time coming across this channel my name is Pilumi and on this channel I share DIY sewing and craft tutorials so if you're into that kind of content please consider subscribing like this video share the video and leave a comment in the comment section I really love to engage with you Today is a special video because it is a collaboration with one of my favorite YouTubers, Priscilla of Kim Dave's Design. I'm sure you all know her, but if you don't, she's a Nigerian fashion designer based in the UK and she also shares amazing sewing content here on YouTube. I'm going to leave details to her channel and Instagram in the description box and on the screen, so do check her out. In this video, we would like to share with you two different ways of upcycling jeans. I'll be sharing with you how to make a simple top using old denim and Priscilla will also be doing the same on her channel. We would like to make this a movement and invite you to upcycle your own denim trousers, make something beautiful and unique instead of trashing your jeans that will end up in a landfill. In the movement, upcycle your own denim trousers, tag us on social media and use the hashtag I upcycled my jeans. I'm gonna leave the details on the screen so you don't forget. Tag us both on Instagram and use the hashtag I upcycled my jeans. And we'll definitely be sharing it to give inspiration to others. I have also created a Pinterest board to give you inspiration on different ways of us upcycling your jeans. So don't forget to check that out. Follow Priscilla and I on Instagram and our socials, subscribe to the channel, engage with us and enjoy the process of upcycling your jeans. So without much further ado, let's get right into the video. I hope you enjoy it and find it helpful. For this project, I'll be using my old jeans. Some of them are like really, really bad, especially in the crotch area. Some of them I had previously upcycled into shorts or skirts and they don't really fit well anymore. For this project, you also need rulers for pattern making, seam ripper, fabric scissors, a top millimeter or half an inch bias tape, pencil or marker, Eraser, cellar tape, pins, open ended zipper, measuring tape, pattern and tracing paper, and finally a matching thread. I will be hacking the Azania dress pattern to make this jeans top. The Azania pattern is my first PDF digital pattern that you can purchase on Etsy or on my website. The links to those will be in the description box um, so you can check it out. It's a simple pattern and was drafted from a basic bodice block so you can pretty much hack it to make anything that you want. If you do not have a basic block pattern, I have a tutorial on how to draft a bodice block using your own measurements. So you can also check that video out as well and the link will be in the description. My size in the Azania pattern is size 10, but because it's drafted for a neat fabric and has negative ease, I will be going up a size to make this woven um, jean top and um, I'm going to choose a size 12. So what I'm doing here is basically tracing the front and back pattern and stopping the length of the top at the hip line to serve as the hemline of the top. So now that I have my basic bodice block drafted out or traced out, I made a few adjustments to the neckline. I took the shoulders out by one inch and dropped the neckline by two inch. And then for the back neckline, I dropped it down by one inch. And then I just redrew a new neckline. Now that that's done, it's time to divide the pattern into small sections to create the patchwork pattern. I did not use any specific measurements here, I just drew horizontal and vertical lines to divide the bodice block into squares and rectangles. You don't have to follow my pattern, the options are vast, you can make different shapes, rectangles, triangles, even circles, even regular shapes, anything you want, just let your creativity flow. Something that is absolutely important regardless of the shape that you use or you draw is the labeling the pattern pieces so that you can ident identify where they belong when it's time to stitch it together on fabric. For example, here I'm labeling the center front, um, the shoulder points, the side seams, where the hemline is, um, 
the direction of the pattern pieces and finally giving each pattern pieces numbers so I have one to seven here After I was done with the front bodies, I pretty much did the same thing for the back bodies as well. Divided it into rectangles and squares, labeled it, and um, that's it. If you are satisfied with the pattern and the patchwork design, cut out each square, rectangle, or whatever shape you've done out. To prep the jeans, I cut it open at the crotch. I also removed the thick waistband and also seam ripped the pockets. This is a long process to do for all four jeans, but put on some entertainment and enjoy the process. So here are the jeans fabrics ready. I will definitely be using the remaining cutouts like the waistbands and pockets for other projects like stuffing things with them because nothing goes to waste here. <laughs> So what you're basically going to do is find parts of the jeans that fit your pattern pieces. You're going to cut two of each pattern piece and I'm just starting here with the front neckline piece um, and then add in half an inch seam allowance to any part that is going to be joined to another fabric piece such as the center front, the center back, the side seam, the top and bottom of the piece as well as the hemline. Because the Azania pattern comes with seam allowance on the side and on the centre back, I did not add seam allowance to the side seams of the pieces that included the side seams. You also want to make sure you're keeping track of the pieces as you cut them out. So here are all my pattern pieces for the front and the back ready to be joined. When sewing, it's important to take things sequentially. Study your pattern and determine which are the logical pieces to sew first. For me, I'm going to start off by sewing all the center front pieces. It is important to mark the pattern labels on the fabric so you also do not lose track as you sew. Also, I'm going to finish sewing the front before moving on to sew the, sew in the back so that I don't mix, mix things up. I keep on repeating not mixing things up because you really want everything to fit where it's supposed to. Okay, now let's begin sewing. I want the inside of this top to be as clean as possible. So I'm going to finish the row edges with an overlocking stitch to prevent the row edges from fraying. If you do not have an overlocker, you can use your regular zigzag stitch in your sewing machine. After overlocking, I gave all the front pieces a good press. I pressed the seam allowance to one side and made sure that I alternated which sides I pressed the seam allowance to so that the seam allowance is not bulky on one side. So that's basically all the steps for stitching the pieces together. You select the pieces that need to be matched together, you sew at the re required seam allowance, finish the row edges and give it a press. So after sewing all the center front pieces, I took it to the table and arranged it again to see where they fit in line with other pieces and to determine what is the next logical piece to sew. I determined that the next pieces to sew or that the order of the pieces to be sewn are to sew number two and number three horizontally and then join the side armhole pieces to both ends of number two and number three and then uh, I would sew five six and seven vertically and then join them horizontally to two three and four and finally add the neckline piece to complete the full front I hope that made sense but you can always see what I'm doing I did not encounter any trouble or confusion as I sewed this way um, because like I said I sewed sequentially and I took it step by step.
after completing the front i moved on to sewing the back the same way i did the front except that i did not sew up the center back seam because that's where the zipper will be fixed before sewing up the shoulder seams i finished the raw edges of the center back the hemline and the side seams after doing that after finishing the raw edges then place the back pieces on the front bodies right sides together pin at the shoulder as well as the side seams and sew at half an inch seam allowance to finish the hem i folded it in once by half an inch and stitch it in place using a straight stitch the next thing to do is now to install the zipper Simply align the edge of the zipper to the edge of the center back seam and pin in place. Then sew this using a zipper foot. After sewing the zipper foot, it's time to finish the row edges of the neckline as well as the armhole. And to do this, I'll be making use of bias tape. Starting from one end of the center back, place the right side of the bias tape on the right side of the top and leave about one inch of the bias tape hanging out of the edge and then wrap the end around the zipper. Then pin the bias tape along the rest of the neckline and sew in place using the fold line of the bias tape as a guide. After sewing, cut off the excess zipper from the tip of the top and flip the bias tape inside to the wrong side and sew close to the edge of the bias tape to close it up. And that's how you use a bias tape to finish row edges. Now you have to do the same to the armholes. After you're done finishing the neckline and the armhole, give it a good press, give everything a good press and with that you'll be done with your upcycled denim jacket. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I was pretty nervous about it, but I made sure that I took extra caution and that really paid off. So that's it guys. The upcycled denim top is done and I have also start, styled it with um, a jewelry neck piece, um, a blazer top and jeans just to show you that it's it shouldn't when you upcycle your jeans it shouldn't become a trash housewear you can definitely wear it to work make it look fancy and nice yeah and, and that is it <laughs> um so that's it i really enjoyed the process of making this top um it didn't take time at all really um i would say it probably took me about six hours if i eliminate the recording time and all the downtime it probably took me even less than six hours it's really a simple project to make just make sure you don't lose track of your pieces make sure you're sewing in a sequential order um, in a way that you won't be confused and you know miss your pieces <laughs> but otherwise it's actually a very simple project so don't forget to share your creations with Priscilla and I using the hashtag I have cycled my jeans on Instagram we'd really love to see you join the movement and um upcycle your jeans instead of making it go to waste <laughs> and, and end up in a landfill or something so yeah thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one bye guys so yeah like this video like this video share the video and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye